Hey, my name is Dave Warden. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, I am going to Philmont. <laughs> and if you're looking at this thing called my face, uh, you can probably tell I'm really excited about that. Uh, my son Nick is going to be 15 next month, and this is such a great opportunity. I remember from the beginning of getting involved with Scouts when he was about 11. Um, everybody was talking about this Philmont thing, and, and later that fall after we got into our troop, uh, they had a meeting where they had the kids who had just been come and talk about it. And I knew right there that that was going to be something that we were going to build up to. And, and for sure my son was going to go. And if there's any way that I could get one of the adult spots, I was going to go. And I'm so fortunate that I got a spot. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this video series is just kind of show you my gear. Part of that is just for me to kind of, you know, look back on it. Part of it might just help you as you're packing uh, for your uh, Philmont experience. We just got done with our first shakedown hike. We went out to the Anza Borrego Desert, which is a very different environment than Philmont, but it's a good one to sort of get out to. It's close, first of all, very different environment. We had really, really nasty weather here on the other side of the mountains, on the beach side of the mountains, and it was beautiful over there. It was fantastic. Um, so it was a good trip. Um, I give myself for use, ease of use, probably like a B. Uh, for weight, like a C, maybe even less. The base weight of this pack, as I've weighed it just before I just repacked it and everything uh, when I got home, is about 24 and a half pounds. Um, I do have a full Nalgene here, which I noticed, so that's not a true base weight, but that's about what it's at. And I'd like to get down because then we're gonna be adding troop gear and food to that. And this thing, you know, for a 70 mile lure is kind of heavy. But let's just start with the pack and kind of break down all the gear I've got and I'll talk to you a little bit about what I like and what's definitely coming to Philmont and the things that um, I just said, no, that doesn't work. Uh, and that's why you do shakedown hikes. First one is the pack. This is a Ridgeline 65 from REI. I've had this pack for ever, I don't know, 10 years, maybe, probably longer actually. I probably had it for 15 years. Um, and it, it works, it's fine. It, it's reasonably comfortable. It's a little heavy for, you know, a pack. Um, I think it's, it's about four and a half pounds, something like that. But I just have a really hard time. Part of what I wanna do with this series too is sort of help you do this on a budget. <laughs> um, Cause that's what I'm trying to do with it. I don't wanna spend, you know, $10,000 to take my kid on a 10 day hiking trip. So I'm trying to kind of do this on the cheap where I can. And I just can't see spending two, three, four hundred dollars on a new pack when I have one that works, and all I'm gonna be really gaining is lightness, um, because this is a really comfortable pack. Uh, it's a really standard sort of brain type of backpack that you've all seen before. Uh, on the outside of the pack, uh, these are just some straps that I use for various different things. This is a bed roll, which I'll talk about. This is my tent actually down here, which my son and I uh, split carry the tent. I have the poles and, and, and stakes in my bag today, but normally he would have them, so maybe that's base weight affected. Uh, nice big water pocket on the side. It's kind of hard to get at, so really helps to have you know a water buddy with that. There is a pocket on the hip here, which I like a lot. I keep my camera in there. I've got a Sony RX100, uh, which is just a compact camera, but it does a fantastic job. If you've never seen the Sony RX100, uh, that is not cheap, <laughs> um, but it is really, really good. So I keep that and my compass in there. Um, also, uh, well then, let's just get into it. Yeah, so let's start from the top and I'll break down what's in the pack and what's making the cut and what isn't. So, up top in the brain, I have my headlamp, pretty standard AAA battery powered headlamp. Some bear spray, I know you don't need bear spray. Um, I carry it anyway, it weighs nothing and I figure I'll have it. A knife, that knife might not make it, it's a little heavy. I'm trying to get a little more weight conscious. Uh, my Leatherman, which again is a little heavy, but uh, super versatile. Uh, a flashlight, this one I really love. It's a perfectly vivid, which is a brand I never heard of. Somebody at local is selling them. And one of the things that's really cool about it is you can do a strobe. So that comes in handy. It also is adjustable and super bright. So I bring two flashlights, um, a signal mirror and a whistle. I have some gloves. And I have two things that for sure will be coming to Philmont with me. The first is this little Arcteryx lightweight beanie, um, which I really is 
bought, well, I bought that for skiing because it fits really nicely under my helmet. But um, it is light and it turns out to be really great. The other one is one of, I think this should be the 11th essential. If I was gonna tell you to get one thing <laughs> for your backpacking experience, it would be a buff. Um, this thing is incredibly versatile. Again, this is something that I've used for years skiing and turned out to be something that is really great for hiking. And the reason is just the versatility of it. When you have this thing, if you're like me and you wear a trucker hat, you get a little bit cold or you're out in the sun, you wanna keep the sun off you, you can just put it around your neck. You get a little colder or the sun comes up and you really wanna get out of the sun, you can put it up like that and cover your ears and then if it gets even worse and the wind is blowing, like we got a little wind in the desert, it's really easy to just create a little face mask with it. It also, it also doubles as a headband. You can put that over your ears. And my nighttime setup is this little Arc'teryx beanie and this buff. So the beanie's kind of, it's pretty good ear protection, but it's kind of thin. So again, when it gets really, really cold, boom, and I am no longer cold. So this thing is also really versatile. If, if it gets super hot, you can, you can put some water on it and it will cool you down. Um, so the buff is for sure making it. And again, I, I think if there's just like one thing that you should always have, it's one of these. Uh, I love, love, love my buff. Um, so that's the top pocket of the brain. Um, I'll probably get a little stuff sack and organize this a little better. I've been packing more, I'll show you as we get into it, packing more with stuff sacks, and I really like it. Um, as we get into the bottom brain pocket, I have a first aid kit. My first aid kit's a little bit chintzy, I would say. I'm just going to move this stuff down. Uh, and the reason for that is our, our troop has a lot of military guys and a lot of Navy guys, some special ops guys. We have quite a few people in our troop. And in fact, we have two of the adult leaders who are going to Philmont have the wilderness first aid, um, all the requirements done. They have that certification. They always have better stuff than I do. So I get the bare essentials. Um, if we are out there alone, which my son and I do go on other trips, I have what I need, but um, those guys have way better gear than I do. And I rely on them. Uh, <laughs> For the most part um, got a little electronics thing a little charger in here this is a jackery charger these are really cheap i, I find this to be an, a really adequate charger you do need you will need i will need to recharge it at philmont for sure but this little guy is good then there's an iphone cord in there and uh, my headphones aren't in there now but that's where i keep my headphones um my little toiletries bag just in a little sort of a little bit sturdier than a ziploc bag you know, toothpaste, toothbrush, sunscreen, Advil, that sort of thing. Uh, a little compression strap. I usually carry a couple of compression straps. They just tend to come in handy. It's kind of like this little setup. It's like, what's that for? Uh, I don't know, a million things. <laughs> They're useful. And then some Thermacare back. I'm 46. My back hurts. <laughs> so those come in handy um, after those long days when uh, I want to rest my back. And that's the interior of the brain. Um, this bag has this big mesh pocket on the outside. That is where I keep my toilet stuff, um, toilet paper, some wipes, and, and <laughs> uh, snacks. So I usually carry a couple of um, these cake RX bars, which are made from all natural ingredients. I'm a big fan of that and then um, some gels, which are not made from all natural ingredients, but give you a ton of energy in a very, very quick uh, little burst if you need it. I also have my coffee set up. Um, this will change for Philmont, for sure. Actually, this is gonna change for the next hike. I've got this little sort of, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's this green little container. Um, if you've ever, if you know Beachbody, I work for Beachbody and we have this program called the 21 Day Fix. It's one of those little containers if you've ever seen that thing. It's just bulky and the coffee's crap. So I'm just gonna go with the Starbucks Via or Viva or whatever it is, the little packets that they have. I, I hate the micro trash that they create, um, but the coffee is much better. They're just a thousand times easier to pack. So probably go with that for coffee because I am like mandatory coffee person. And that's it for the little uh, outside mesh packet. What's in the bag? So the first thing is my clothes. Uh, I'm not going to get into my clothes today. Uh, we'll maybe do that another time. 
I will talk a little bit about this stuff sack. I got this at, at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods for, I think it was $8.99. And it's a little five liter sack. It's a good size and it does a reasonably good job of keeping everything organized. It's a little bit heavy and I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna get a C to Summit. It's actually on the way uh, via Amazon now. And I'll show you why I'm gonna do that in a second. My, my son is probably gonna inherit that guy. That's my clothes. Then I have my mess kit. Um, this is another thing I've had for just eons. It's an MSR uh, mess kit. You can see there's two bowls. This is something, again, my son and I split pair carry. Two bowls, two cups. The cups have lids and uh, are sort of spork set up. And it's kind of bulky, you know? I don't know. It's served us well, but something I'm definitely going to look at is uh, a new mess kit. So that's not a lock for Philmont. I've had it for a very long time. Something that will not be going to Philmont with me, which uh, is a tough thing for me to say because it's a good friend, is my jet boil. Uh, this is another thing I've had for just ever. Um, and this one is, is pretty much toast. The igniter's dead. Um, it, I really struggled with it out in the desert. <laughs> um, and I think it's just maybe on its last legs. And I'm gonna be replacing this with a much smaller, much lighter setup that I saw actually here on YouTube from another, like an ultralight backpacker guy little stove it's only like 14 bucks and just sits right it sits right on top it just sits right on top of the canister and then just a little tin cup very simple very easy i'm really just using this for coffee anyway um you know when we're in camp and we're boiling water if we need a small amount of water or you know it's really struggling to bring the water to a boil i'll kind of jump in with this and just add some hot water to it because it bring it does bring water to a boil super super fast but what this is about is the first thing I do when I wake up after I get this junk out of the bear box is coffee. <laughs> and I also like um, if we're going to take a break for lunch or something like that after lunch to just have a quick zap of, of coffee. I'm, I'm a little perhaps I'm addicted to coffee. I'll just admit that. <laughs> so Jeff Wells not going to make it. Going to replace that with a different stove, which I will show you. Although I have to say this thing has served me exceptionally well. And um, I am a big fan of this generally, but just not for film on, I think. Um, my sleeping bag. Um, and this is, I'll show you this really quickly. The first thing about the bag is really the compression sack that it's in. This did not come with this, this bag did not come with this compression sack. My tent is actually in the compression sack that came with um, this sleeping bag. This is one of these Sea to Summit, um, Sea to Summit compression sacks. And what is awesome about them is this whole orange area is basically an air permeable layer going out. So what it does is you compress the sack, it lets the air escape. So like with this one, you know, you've kind of got to let some air out and squeeze it and let some air out, squeeze it and kind of jockey back and forth with it. With these Sea to Summit ones, you just roll them if they're rollers like this one or this in this case with the compression straps, just strap them down and the air all comes out the bottom. This is also waterproof. And the reason that's really important for me is because the sleeping bag is down. Speaking of the sleeping bag, I'm gonna show that to you right now. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I told you I was gonna show you my sleeping bag and I'm wearing a down vest. Uh, this in fact is my sleeping bag. Uh, it goes all the way down to the floor and ties at the bottom. I'll show you that in a second. My kids call it the Caterpillar. Uh, what it is in fact is an Exped Dreamwalker 650 down sleeping bag. I absolutely love this sleeping bag. Talk about the down in the second. A lot of people are down on down. I am not. Uh, again, center zip, which is really great. I also love the head enclosure. And that is another sort of hammock camping thing that I think is really handy. But this head enclosure keeps your head really warm. This thing also cinches up. We were out in the desert uh, a couple days ago and it was so cold. And this thing cinches down to, to just nothing. And I just had like a buff over my eyes and I was totally fine. Uh, obviously the side, these zip up. And so it fully encloses your body. It also has some little pockets that are on the interior of it. Let me show you the bottom really quickly. It's also what I, one of the things I really like about it. I haven't ever had to use it for this, but it's very versatile. You can tell if it's super, super cold, you get caught out and you're not ready. And all of a sudden it is super, super cold. I almost wore this in the morning when we're out in the desert. So it's like 35 degrees, but it was okay. It heats up quick. This thing doubles as a really nice wearable down jacket. Here's the bottom. 
Obviously we've got an open bottom here, but it's got these toggles and they close right down and that seals up and I've never had an issue with my feet being cold. In fact, on warmer nights, really nice to be able to open this thing up and let your feet breathe a little bit. So um, that is the Xped Dreamwalker 650. Again, it's down. What that means is it can't get wet. So, you know, the versatility of having it as maybe a camp jacket, they do make synthetic versions. They're significantly more expensive. I got this at the REI garage. Um, and, you know, the synthetic ones, if you can buck up for that, that's probably gonna be better, especially if you're gonna use it multi-use as like a camp sort of jacket to keep you warm. But you're probably camping somewhere super cold if that's the case. And if you are, you probably brought enough gear anyway, but it is super versatile. I do love the way you're in and out of it. Also, I did use this uh, in the desert uh, to go pee in the middle of the night. And instead of taking it off, I just undid the bottom, hiked it up around my waist, had all that top warmth. I didn't lose any heat. I didn't have to rustle around a whole lot. It was just a matter of undoing the bottom, bringing it up, cinching it back up, going out, doing my business, coming back in the tent, putting it down, cinching it back up. And I was really, really warm. So uh, Xped Dreamwalker 650, love this bag. All right, so as you can see, the sleeping bag is coming to Philmont. It's coming with me in this waterproof sack. Again, down. Um, another thing about having your stuff in a waterproof bag is if you do happen to fall on a river, and I've heard, um, depending on where you're going, there are river crossings, uh, or it's raining and your stuff just gets wet. If my down bag gets wet, my trip is really going to be rough. <laughs> so. Keeping that in uh, a waterproof sack, love, love, love these Sea to Summit uh, compression sacks. I have more of them coming on Amazon. Uh, what else do I have in here? I have my camp shoes, uh, my camp shoes. I also have a ton of rubber bands, I should say that. Um, I love rubber bands, I got a ton of them. Shoes are just um, New Balance, Minimus, Trainer. Again, a pair of shoes I've had for a really long time. Um, I'm probably gonna put some like bungee cord type of laces on these so that I can use them in the middle of the night to go up and go pee. Good for um, activities around the different film on activities. So I don't have to wear my hiking boots all the time. Got something that, you know, is a little bit durable. They are pretty lightweight, probably a little bit heavier than maybe a, you know, a pair of Crocs or something else you might bring. But nonetheless, I like them. Now, oh, and then I've got um, some paracord just in the bottom, you know, for emergency purposes. Then something that will not be making it. And this was something I was really excited about and terribly disappointed with. And that is these little collapsible water bottles. And I actually bought two different brands of these um, just to test them out for our shakedown hike. And I don't like either of them and I will tell you why. The reason why I don't like them, <laughs> variety of reasons. The biggest one though, I'll show you, this is why I have water here. So I can just fill this thing up and show you what happens when because the concept is great, right? A collapsible uh, water container. It's got a little carabiner hook on it. So in theory, you could hook it to your, um, your strap on your backpack, which is what I tried to do. So, you know, like that. This one is way too big, but they flop around way too much. And the biggest thing, like this is full right now, and you can kind of see how just jiggly that is. It's just not really functional. And if you, then I want a little water. Get some water out, it's even worse. And it's got a little valve on top that will air inflate it. And it, it's still, it's just, no. That just doesn't work. So that uh, is not gonna be coming to film on. <laughs> In fact, it's not gonna be coming on any trips with me. These are gonna be probably uh, stuff that I'll donate to the troop and, and somebody else can enjoy them or not. Um, but I do like the concept of having collapsible canteens that are refillable. So instead what I did, and I've got them on order from Amazon, is I got two 32 liter bags that are, that are compatible with my uh, Sawyer Mini water filter. So this, this one comes with the Sawyer Mini. It's 16 ounces, I think. Yeah, 16 ounces. The ones I have on the way are 33 or 32, I think they're 33 actually. And they have a carabiner too, so you could hook them here um, if you want to. I'm not sure that I'll do that, but the Sawyer just screws right on the top of those. I think that's gonna be 
a way better setup. I'll probably ditch this bag once I have those. Sawyer, by the way, also fits right on top of the, uh, I think there are a liter and a half bottles of smart water. So that's another thing that a lot of people do is they just go buy those liter and a half. They're the ones with the little sippy top. Um, and that's what they use with their Sawyer. I tried that this trip and I just didn't like it. I think those bottles are just janky and they fall apart and um, they're just not very sturdy and reliable and sturdy and reliable is something that is important to me. So that's my Sawyer water filter. I didn't talk about that earlier. I was gonna get here. So these things are not coming. And, and the other thing is, again, in concept, good deal, right? Collapsible water bottle, really smart. But what all this, you just don't need. Like you just don't need that. You know, the other ones really, they've got a very small, you'll see once I get them, they've just got a very small nozzle, much like that Sawyer one did. This is just way, it's, I mean, it doesn't weigh a lot, but it's bulky and it's just generally unnecessary. So that's not coming. You may disagree with me on that. You can, uh, that's, you know, we are free country. What else do I have? I have some tent poles and some tent stakes. Um, again, my son and I rotate carrying these and the tent, the tent body is heavier than these. And I will get to the tent in just a second as we work our way down the pack. This is a Fox Outfitters Airlight 100, which is a very cheap inflatable um, bedroll mattress, air cushion, pillow, whatever you want to call it, that has served me for very well for several years. I've never had any problems with them. They're super comfortable. They don't deflate at night. I'm a little worried about taking this to Philmont. <laughs> um, and I, I, I just don't know. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I, and I'm going to try the, the Thermarest, um, you know, closed cell mattress because I just, this makes me a little nervous. Although every time I use it, I go, oh, I like it just out of Anza Borrego, just so comfortable, <laughs> you know, because I sometimes sleep on my side and you sleep on your side, something like this is really, really important. So kind of still on the fence with that, but these are like 30 bucks when I bought it anyway on Amazon a couple of years ago. And I have had, I really like this thing. So if you're doing like a lot of what I've been doing over the last couple of years, two, three day trips with a scout troop, doing some car camping, that sort of thing, or camping pretty close to, pretty close to home, pretty close to cars, something like this. I'm a huge fan of this. This thing has been great. I got one for me and one for my boy. Um, I'm also a hammock camper, which I talked a little bit about in the sleeping bag video. This thing fits in the hammock. It keeps you warm because it's got a good R value. Just generally for the money, this little thing is, I'm a big fan of that. But I don't know if it's coming to Philmont because I'm just worried it's gonna pop. Um, and I probably, the other thing I'm gonna check on that point too is how well stocked the commissaries are for stuff like that. So if I can get a relative degree of comfort that we're gonna be at a commissary where I can get a replacement for like a, you know, Thermarest or something comparable, I may roll it with, I may roll with it because I do, I do really like the, the thing. It's just been a good, cheap little option. This is my tent. As I mentioned, this is actually the stuff sack for my, my sleeping bag. And you can see probably why I go with the Sea to Summit one, because it just compresses the, the bag to half the size basically. Um, and then I use this for the tent. So my tent is in a waterproof sack as well. Um, water, waterproof dry bag rather. And I really like that. The tent is new. Uh, the tent is the newest piece of gear that I've got here. It's a Marmot Limelight 2, uh, which I just picked up and I will show you right now. So we are out on our first shakedown hike for Philmont. And this is the first time I've set up this Marmot Limelight 2, um, which my son and I are probably gonna share. Um, Philmont has their own tents, um, but I think we're gonna use this one if we can. Kind of gotten conflicting opinions on that. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the Marmot, or the, yeah, Marmot Limelight 2. This is a big two-person tent, <laughs> uh, which is nice. I've got it all guide out. As you can see, we're in the desert. Uh, we are at, there's our scout troop. Uh, we are at the Bow Willow Campground, which is in the Anza Borrego Desert. And it's really nice right now, which is why I'm filming. <laughs> but uh, it, there's a little bit of wind. It has been very windy and I expect it's gonna be even windier. So we just guide it out, plus it's our first setup. So we wanted to get familiar with it. Um, but a couple of features about this that I really love that I'll show you in just a second, because I gotta put the camera down and make a few 
adjustment. So back to the video. Here's one of the things I love about this tent is this massive door. Like the door just includes, <laughs> it's the, pretty much the whole front of the tent. Um, what's nice about this tent too is the poles are pre-bent. It's kind of hard to see with the fly on. I'll break it down later, but the poles are pre-bent. So what that does is it just creates this whole bottom section that really, really creates a nice livable area right around headspace. Uh, but yeah, that's our Limelight 2 first night, Anzaburgo Desert. Pretty stoked to give it a shot. See how it stands up to the sun wind. We've been getting a little bit of rain on and off too. There, it is really, really raining back in San Diego. Uh, here's the sunset over the mountains. Super cool. It was really raining back in San Diego. You can see that big storm here. And they kind of come over these mountains and die. But you just get the first little burst of it, and then it goes away. So hopefully, I'm pretty confident actually. That's going to keep us pretty dry. <laughs> All right, so a couple other little highlights. Huge vestibule. Nice. And they're on both sides. Uh, the other side doesn't have this massive door. The door's a little bit smaller. But nice big vestibule. My pack, my boots, mask kit, jet boil, everything in there. And we come around here to find my son, Nick. Nick, what do you think about this tent? Uh, I think it's great. It's really easy to set up since all the poles are kind of always connected. So you just have to put them up and clip them in. Got enough room in there? Oh, there's lots of room. You have any, one of the cool features about this tent is that in here, somewhere, there's a little thing up there in the corner. See that little deal in the corner? If you put your headlamp in that, that little pocket up there, that little white thing, see that? Yeah. That's a little translucent pocket, and if you put your headlamp in there, oh, it lights up the whole tent. Uh, it's kind of like with the thing with the milk bottle trick. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Yes. All right, well, the wind is starting to go. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad we guide this thing down. Let's uh, go ahead and zip it up. All right. All right. Back to work. It's All right, so that's the Limelight 2. Huge fan of this particular tent, which, again, we did buy for Philmont. Um, it's big which I like, and one reason I like it is, come here, come here, is this guy. Uh, <laughs> this is Finn, he is our one-year-old, hello buddy, he's our one-year-old Vishla, and my son and I are gonna do trips with him, and what's nice about it, there's plenty of room for him to lay down at our feet in the tent, which is what he's gonna wanna do, he's not gonna wanna sleep outside, because he is a total Vishla, which means he's a Velcro dog, which means he needs to be as close as possible to you at all times. Um, so that's pretty much just a wrap of my Philmont gear and what, uh, you know, what I've got now, what I'm going to be replacing it with. Again, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to do this without spending a zillion dollars using some old gear that has been, has worked for a really long time where I can, replacing it where I can't. Um, there's a few things in the clothes department that I've got to do for that. I need to get a new rain jacket because mine is completely shot and from everything I've heard, rains a lot in Philmont. <laughs> so I hope that's helpful. Um, that's just video one. Again, once I get the new setup and the next shakedown hike we're going to do is a two day on the PCT. So we're going to just hike a section of the PTC. It should be a fun trip. Uh, the, the Philmont crew and maybe a couple of other older scouts who want to do it are going to do uh, a, about 15 miles and then meet up with um, with the rest of the scout troop, the younger scouts, then they're going to join us uh, and, and we'll spend the night with them. Then they're going to join us for the next, I think it's six or seven, something like that. Last six or seven, they'll join us without packs and, you know, just kind of be along for the ride and should be good for them. We did a hike like that with my son uh, and it was another thing that just really inspired us to get to Philmont. So super excited about the trip. That's my gear as it stands now. Uh, I'm sure it'll get better. Uh, I didn't cover also... Some of the other 10 essentials like fire, that stuff's all in the, in the pack. So uh, there you go. That's it for now. And I'll show you how this develops and changes as we go.